Hey everyone, it's Sam Hamwich here. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. This here is a quick tip guide on how to get to the red ranks as a survivor. I really hope you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you hit subscribe and you can check me out live on twitch.tv slash Sam Hamwich. For this video, we want to make sure that we want to do it quickly, so we're going to address what you need to know. You're here because you want to get to red ranks. You're not here because you want to repair five generators and escape every match. Just make sure that you know that difference because our objective here is to rank up at all costs. So the first thing that you do have to know is that the ranking system in Dead by Daylight goes by emblems. Okay, and the color of the emblem will vary depending on your performance. The colors of the emblem start off obviously with no emblem. Next is bronze, then silver, gold, and if you are simply amazing, iridescent. Along with the color of the emblem, you have to make sure that you're going to rank them up in all four categories. You will be unable to pip up if you slack in even one of these categories. So the first category is... Lightbringer. You rank up this emblem by repairing generators. You also gain points if you're being chased by the killer and the other survivors are doing the generators. The second category is Unbroken. This is what you get when you escape the trial without being downed at all. If you do even manage to die, however, you can still earn up to a silver emblem by lasting in the match as long as possible. The third category is Benevolent. This is what you get for helping other survivors on your team. The best way to get the points in that is actually unhooking another survivor. As well, make sure that they're unhooked safely and that will solidify that you get those points because if you unhook a survivor if they're down within 15 seconds of being unhooked it will actually make you lose points because that's considered an unsafe hook and the final category is the evader category this basically summarized is your ability to avoid being hit by the killer you can however get some points by just remaining hidden near the killer in their terror radius uh, you could get slight amount of points for that, uh, but the most points that you're going to get is actually from being chased by the killer. When they're far away, you get a few points, and as the killer gets closer and closer to you, your point amount increases. The longer the chase, the more points you get. Keep in mind, if you're hit during the chase, that that is considered a loss in the chase, and you're only going to get half the points that you collected so far. So obviously, if you can, at all costs, escape from the killer, and you'll net all the points from that chase. As well, if you can manage to stun the killer with a pallet, you're going to rack up some extra points during that chase as well. Now, the second thing you're going to have to understand is actually how the emblems combine together to determine whether or not you ranked up. As you can see here, this is an example of your progress from ranking up. You can see that there is five dots here and those are what we call pips. As you can see at this current rank, it requires five pips in order to go to the next rank. Keep in mind as well that potentially if you did really bad in the match, you could actually lose a pit. And yes, you can go back in rank. Now, to see if you actually earned one of these pips, you can find out at the end match results. There is a summary to show you exactly how well you did towards gaining a pip. Potentially, you could lose a pip. You could w hit the black one in the middle which is considered a safety pip or you could pip up or if you did exceptionally well in all four categories and which includes not being downed you can potentially even get two pips in one match all right 
Now we're going to move on to a recommended build. Now keep in mind that you can use whatever build you want. This isn't required. However, these perks will specifically allow you to get more points in the designated emblem system, which we'll go over really quick. Okay, so the first perk that I recommend is very highly recommended, actually, is Borrowed Time. Because this is going to allow you to rescue survivors almost without having to worry about uh, them, uh, the killer downing the survivor too quickly that you don't get the safe hook rescue. So luckily, as you can see, uh, the survivor will gain endurance when you rescue them while in the killer's terror radius for 15 seconds, which is the exact time that you have to wait in order to get that safe hook. So. For the most part, there are a few killers that can, you know, they don't have a terror radius for whatever reason. A perk or a certain killer may not have a terror radius. So it doesn't work 100% of the time. But I always say for the majority of the time, uh, borrow time will actually uh, save your butt when you're uh, potentially doing an unsafe hook rescue. So that's going to allow you to get those safe hooks. The second perk that I recommend is Decisive Strike. Um, it will be changing shortly with the next patch. However, the basic will be staying the same. Um, that way, if you are tunneled immediately, what this is going to allow you to do is uh, break free of the killer's grasp, and then you're able to get into another chase, which is going to net you more evader points. So that way, uh, you'll be able to get that emblem even higher, uh, potentially giving you even maybe even a fourth complete chase if you can uh, get to a nice safe spot and maybe uh, delay the killer's time a bit more with that one. Um, the third perk that I recommend is not necessarily dead hard, but an exhaustion perk. This will allow you again to work on those evader points, um, which are typically one of the harder ones to get as a survivor. Uh, so it will extend your chases generally. Um, worst case scenario, it only gives you, you know, maybe two more seconds with a dead heart if you're caught out in the open. Uh, but more likely than not, what will happen will be that you will indeed uh, extend the chase. You might be able to get to a nice safe spot and extend the chase, you know, by another like 15, 30 seconds. Uh, netting you even more evader points. So uh, I recommend dead hard, but live um, Balanced landing they all work really well. I do not recommend using Sprint burst as uh, you only do get your evader points when you're in a chase So while yes sprint burst might save your butt from the killer because you got away before they even got there uh, You didn't net any evader points because you essentially ran away from the chase before it even started um, and then the last one that I really recommend is actually Kindred. Um, you can use maybe Empathy uh, or another information perk. Very similar to this one. However, what this one's going to allow you to do actually is it's going to allow you to uh, see who's on the hook, what's going on. The information that you get from this will let you know should you stay on this generator. Uh, oh, look. Everybody else is doing a gen. Oh, it looks like one person might be being chased by the killer. Maybe I should go for that rescue. So that way, if you notice that someone else is going for the rescue, then you could just stay on the generator. So that's going to allow you to potentially get points in either the benevolent uh, emblem, if you had to go for the rescue, or you could stay getting Lightbringer by just continuing doing a generator instead of wasting your time. So anyway, guys, those are the four perks. Right quickly, Borrow Time, Decisive Strike, Dead Hard, Kindred, uh, I totally recommend these perks if you're looking specifically to rank up. They'll, inc they'll allow you to increase those points uh, a lot more easier than you would without them. So, let's summarize this in a simple list of objectives. So if you do this every match, you can almost guarantee you're going to be able to pip up. First, work on completing two generators. You can do it with another survivor, just keep in mind that doing it will net you additional blood points, but it will not give you additional progress on your emblem. Second, attempt to rescue two survivors from the hook during the entire match. If you can ensure that you do that safely, you're going to get enough emblem points to pip up in that category. Third, last approximately 45 seconds in three separate chases, and you're going to be able to get enough evader points 
to solidify that pip. The last thing you want to work on, especially if you don't think you guys are going to escape, is you definitely want to stay in the match as long as possible. That way you can get at least the silver emblem in that final category. Just to let you guys know, as of March 16th, 2021, <laughs> Behavior uh, still hasn't got their you-know-what together to fix the game. Um, as you can see, we did manage to get a Black Pip through our emblem system. However, due to some bug of them not being able to do uh, simple math, that equals minus one on a rank progress. So that does mean I de-pipped, even though technically I should have safety pipped. So hopefully they do fix this. This will make getting to red ranks easier. But as of right now, you may notice there is a little bit of a glitch going on. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the entire video. I really hope you got something out of this and hopefully I'll see you guys in the red ranks. But make sure that you check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Sam Hamwich. And again, thanks so much for watching.